Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Today we are here in the studios and we are working on AIOU history. Today we have our guest, former registrar and dean, Allama Iqbal Open University Professor Dr. Aslam Askar Saab. We welcome you in the studio, sir. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Sir, uh, let us know when first time you came across with AIOU and this idea of distance learning, sir? It is very long time ago. Actually, <coughs> I returned from USA in October 74. 74. And uh, I was here in working as part-time teacher in one of the institutes uh, attached with the Ministry of Education that was National Institute of Teacher Education. Right. And uh, I used to stay there as well in one of the friends. It was October 74. 74, right. In February 75, mm -hmm. I was appointed as ad hoc assistant professor in Open University. Mashallah, mashallah. So, and we were at that time located at uh, one of the primary schools in F74. Now oh. that is Islamabad Model College for Girls, perhaps. Right. And, right. Uh, so from the very beginning, you are almost, with, with this university, from, mashallah. Almost. So uh, how you feel at that time, what uh, you were feeling about the idea of this open university and uh, what uh, was your thinking about the future of this university at that time? Actually, fortunately, unfortunately, during my studies in USA, I was working as a graduate assistant. Right. And at that time, at least I didn't hear about distance education. Right. But the work I was assigned, that was the writing of individual study guide. Right. For students of two, three, four trades. Right. And uh, at least uh, I had uh, some idea that a student who is to study independently, mm -hmm. what type of things what right. type of material he has to get. Uh, but I didn't have any opening, any information about distance education. It was the first exposure when I was appointed as a teacher in Open University. And, uh, uh, but it was located in primary school, you can imagine. Yes. And there was a building hired in G6. Uh, th there was some teacher, senior teacher was sitting there. But right. Uh, right. That is, I was working there. so. Right. Uh, Dr. Saab, you already uh, done your PhD at that time or afterwards you No, did you? I had already graduated. Uh, I graduated in August 74. Right. So right. came back in August and in October 74, I uh, there was a friend of mine working in the ministry and he was in charge of that institute. Right, right. Uh, Dr. Mukhtar Bhatti. Right. So, so he said, okay, you come here and just uh, it is a part-time job and deliver some lectures and mm -hmm. that's so there would be some chances. Right, <laughs> right, that's nice. Sir, who do you think that uh, this open learning distance system is a remedy to our crisis in this country of education crisis and all these things? Now, what do you think? Uh, actually, with the, all the exposure that I had and the experience in this system and whatever the brief knowledge I have about the system. <clears throat> there cannot be any single remedy for uh, any illness, a disease, a defect, a crisis. But uh, there can be many. Right. And distance education is one of the remedies which can effectively work for the benefit of the society and to provide access to the groups which cannot be otherwise read right. and who cannot benefit from the formal, which we say the formal system of education. Right. So I think this is uh, one of the major contributors right. in providing access, opportunity, equity to the people in Pakistan. Sir, you were mentioning that when you joined this university, it was located uh, in a primary school building. 
So, would you like to throw some light on how we shifted to this place and what was the transition and what was that whole story? Oh, I don't know much detail because I was one of the junior workers right, actually. Right, right. But uh, from there on, actually, they shifted in 75, late 75, mm -hmm. to this campus. And uh, these are the f four blocks. Fourth block was under construction Fourth at that block. time. Right. And they were the hostels, mm -hmm. hostel buildings, mm -hmm. uh, which were under a scheme of the Ministry of Education to be provided to various education institutions. Right. You might have seen the same kind of hostel attached with the curriculum wing. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, these were the four blocks, uh, part of that scheme. Right. And uh, this uh, land was, got allocated from CTA naturally, mm -hmm. and uh, then we shifted perhaps in late 75. Right, um, right. So uh, what were uh, the working condition at that time? What courses were there, and initial courses, and what about this uh, uh, idea of IT and all this thing? Uh, since it was very, very initial stage right. for a university, for an education institution to be established and to start working and uh, institution with the novel and new idea. Mm -hmm. Mm. No example in this country or even in this area existed, yeah. in this geographical area. So, <clears throat> number one, we had to learn something about it. Number two, we had to get some feeling what type of areas should the university start yes. in terms of study. Yes. Uh, so, we used to have discussions uh, at least at uh, departmental level. There okay. were a couple of departments, there yeah. weren't many. And the uh, department uh, in which I was working was a uh, appointed was industrial education. Industrial education, and right. Uh, there was a professor, Professor Lake was the head, uh, the chairman actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time we started working on electronics and electricity kind of sh short courses. Short courses, right. But the university seen number one, it uh, received certain instruction from the Ministry of Education to train teachers. Right. And training means retraining, in service training in for service the teachers. Training, yes. And therefore, the first job, one of the first jobs which university started was PTOC, PTOC, Primary Teachers Orientation Course. Right. For the primary teachers, and it was the one with the initial emphasis. Right. Later on, almost with the same, within the same area, if, um, same period, Early son Arbi was started, mm -hmm. and it was especially in collaboration with and full sport, uh, at least technical sport, in terms of academic, right? Not the production, yeah, yeah. Uh, of Saudi Arabia. So the teacher Arabia. was appointed right. here, and uh, Dr. Khalil Rahman was working with them, right? And uh, he was uh, one of the ten major persons who was involved in this, and then from IT side. Uh, the IT people, Kali, right. Amar Jalil, they were involved. But initially, they were the main courses, two courses, right. you can say. Yes. Later on, a foundation course was started on the pattern of UKU, UK. because they had the foundation course. Right. And since it was meant to be a post metric, post SSE institution initially, right. As written the act, yeah. preamble of that. Yeah. So, we, at least the university started that we should have that kind of open access. Whosoever passes the foundation courses, he or she should be moving in intermediate. Right. Uh, but unfortunately, the first run, which was at the basically at the local level, Pindi Islamabad. Yes. The feeling was that uh, the institutions where these graduates might be going mm -hmm. will not be accepting these people who did not have matriculation SSE. Right. So as a result, after I think a couple of runs or just one run, that foundation course was closed. Closed. And the university started working on intermediate level courses and uh, for which the admission requirement would be SSE to 
go in line with the existing system of education right. to provide accept, uh, acceptance for our own graduates Clients. who pass out from yes, the university. Yes. So that was uh, one of the reasons for starting intermediate. Then in intermediate, we started sort of functional courses. Right. Like uh, food and nutrition, mm -hmm. electricity, electronics, yeah. English, economics, etc., which are more applicable in daily life and more related to the jobs, job market. Yeah. So the initial emphasis was this, uh, holding the people and preparing them for jobs in the market. I think, sir, uh, at that time, uh, Pakistan was uh, going through an era where a uh, lot of people were getting their jobs in Middle East and all these things. I think that al Lisanul Arabi and uh, blend with this industrial sort of uh, courses or functional courses, it was the demand of the day, I think so. Yes, because that is a motivating factor. Yeah. And the uh, government was running short courses in technology and Arabi, Arabi for doctors and etc. Uh, functional courses and uh, that Arabi was definitely, as you said, was mainly in relation to the people who would go abroad in the Middle East right. and use this base for communication. For communication. Um, and uh, the te technology related courses, they were again that was perhaps the boom area, uh, yeah. uh, boom period yeah, yeah. for Pakistan is going abroad. Right. And uh, we started electrical wiring, electrician, auto mechanics, etc. Good type of courses, uh, especially related to technology. Right. Radio servicing, auto servicing, yeah. etc. So the purpose, yes, according to the need of that time. Yeah, right. But Dr. at the same, sorry, at the same time, keeping in view that uh, certain groups, certain strata, strata of uh, strata of our society were not being accessed. Right. And one of them was the female. Right. So the f in early 80s, uh, the university had received a directive from the president that uh, female courses may be started, especially at metric level. Mm -hmm. We had to have the cover actually, right? Uh, to start metric. Although we were offering courses, right. functional courses in the name of functional courses, which are beneficial for the people in their life. Mm -hmm. But this was special emphasis for the women to admit them, and we started metric uh, SSC metric, especially for women. It was limited to women. Then later on, we started for both of them, made it open for right. them. Right. Dr. Sab, uh, how many departments were there in the initial stage and how we developed our faculties and something like that? What Basically, is this story? Yes, sorry. Basically, there were two departments. One was agriculture, the other was industrial education. Mm -hmm. Then uh, education itself right. as a department started. That was the Institute of Education. Institute of Education. And uh, that... Uh, institute which was functioning under the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. it was transferred to this. Right. There was some hard feeling in the ministry as well. Mm -hmm. But however, it was at, uh, brought into the university and that Institute of Education later developed into the faculty and various departments. Yeah, right. So initially, basically at that time when I joined, there were I think two departments later on, education was added, it made three, and then gradually it started expanding, expanding and uh, you know, you can see yeah, the university is at this place. Sir, what was the, uh, at that time, training, any sort of thing related to this novel idea you were saying, new idea at that time. So people, those who were uh, having their degrees from the formal mm -hmm. universities, they have to adapt this new modality. So what was that process uh, at early stages of this university? And In the very, very beginning, 75, actually, we didn't have any. But very soon, number one, there was an agreement. It had been in process, definitely, I am sure, from the very beginning. There was uh, that project under which ODA, Overseas Development uh, 
uh, authority from agency, sorry, from UK. Right. And Open University. That uh, agreement was signed, and as a result of that agreement, experts from Open University UK, UK came in here, and uh, they helped the university in setting up those kind of things which were needed mm -hmm. for distance education. Uh, moreover, certain courses under UNESCO program, in collaboration with PTV, in collaboration with radio, right. uh, were arranged for the faculty members. And uh, we have gone through uh, UNESCO workshops and uh, TV workshops. And at that time, there were no IT, anything. Yeah. But the concept was there. Concept and was it there. was the first block where first uh, radio studios were established. Yeah, right. Right. by improvising the place where the National Bank is located okay, at. Okay, okay. Very small and place. And very uh, small place and just audio recording and we see was sitting mm -hmm. close to the other side. Right. And, uh, but there weren't any TV production right. facilities and the university used to use PTV facilities for recording of their PTV pro TV okay. programs. TV program over there in the PTV in studios. studios. Right, yes. right. So the collaboration with the PTV and radio, it was also from the very, very beginning. Very Right, right. So how come we starting expanding our university? You said that uh, first of all we started from uh, Jispindi and adjacent areas. How we expanded it? Uh, number one, since uh, its concept it is open, as you know, yeah. and uh, distance separation of the student and the teacher. Yeah. And using this idea, this uh, definitely university advertises courses, programs, and had the admission process here, admission office and controller office, examination office. And uh, almost for in 75, we had a person who was assigned the work of the regional services establishment and how it should be established uh, and uh, so those regional campuses as we now call it although some of our colleagues still write regional uh, sorry regional offices, offices. and uh, I sometimes feel I myself feel ashamed that the people who are in the university, yeah, yeah. they are writing their regional offices, they are not offices. Right. Under the concert, since the expansion, providing support to the students right. at closest, lower level, local mm. level, if mm. not really local level, at least closer to them, yeah. they are the academic activity places. They are not the offices. Right. Because concept so is totally concept uh, is different. academic. It is yeah, not office. Course. So I would again uh, request, uh, I don't know, should I or not, but uh, our colleagues not to use the office except the coordinating office. Yeah, yeah. Because that place, that person who is a part-time employee, he is just providing information. Yeah. There is no and other academic, uh, no uh, academic association academic. of work. But with any him. which we call, which may call as sub-office, mm -hmm. that is the region center. Not yeah. the regional office. All activities are going on over there. This academic, academic activity, activity workshop workshops are and there, and the training of uh, tutors and uh, workshop for the tutors and the teachers and providing academic guidance. All that is academic activity, so that is not uh, office work. So yeah, that yeah. Is an uh, academic inshallah, work. Inshallah. Sir, uh, would you like to say something about? Uh, the main idea of this open learning system and particularly our university i think uh, as you said that we are trying to uh, provide services to the doorsteps of the students so access is one thing sir would you like to throw some light on access quality and quantity all this paradigm yes these paradigms are at times considered to be contradictory to each other opposite to each other <laughs> When we say quality and quantity, some people are in favor that we should emphasize quality. Right. And establishment of certain prime institutions in our country perhaps is one of the reflection of that thinking. Right. But the quality can come out of the quantity. 
Right. This is my belief. Yeah. If you have so many people, and we have the examples, the start system, the primary school, the high school, the public school system, they are producing people for manpower for this. And uh, although there are not much facilities for them, as compared to these prime institutions, credit colleges, and now the yeah. private school systems, but still they are good enough to run the country, to contribute to the economy of the society. So keeping in view the open university, I think, number one, the government has to provide educational facilities to every person. Yes. And our constitution says the up to secondary school level, it is the duty of the government, mm. duty of the state, yes, state, to provide free education up to secondary level. That is written in our constitution. But practically not. Practically not. Now what is happening? The government is receding. Yeah. Government responsibility is receding. They say we cannot do it. Mm. Now they have allowed the private sector to come in to fill in that gap. And uh, filling that gap by private uh, system, they are not following the national system of education. Yes. And as a result, as you know, there are three streams of system with no coordination among them. Mm. And if you have to prepare a nation, you have to prepare under single school system. Yeah, of course, of course. So open university being a national institution, I think is one of the integrating force yeah, for sure. various regions, as we say, various provinces, various level of schools, various levels of teachers, various level of colleges, even the universities. Yes. University teachers are enrolling here, college teachers are enrolling here. Mainly, number one, because it costs less. Yes. Number two, it provides the opportunity without leaving the job. Right. We have one of the major benefits yeah, they are yeah, getting, they are continuing with the job.